Hi everyone, I'm Trish Triumph O'Sullivan and today we're going to be talking about formal portraits. It's lecture number 26. I'll put it on there just so we can remember. <laughs> In the photography class, photo one. Um, so let's get right to it. Let's talk about formal portraits. So a formal portrait, um, and there's two different kinds of portraits. There's a formal portrait and a um, candid portrait. And a formal portrait is a, basically a portrait that the subject will like. It's one that the, the subject, when you show them, is going to say, wow, this looks great. This is exactly what I wanted. Um, and a lot of times people don't like pictures of themselves. How many of you guys like, like to have your picture taken? How many of you really like to have your picture taken, right? Almost nobody. Um, and when we're in a live class, um, I have maybe one or two people raise their hands and say they like to have their portrait taken. And most people don't like portraits of themselves. Um, and many people say it's because of the crappy photographer, <laughs> right? Um, and, so, and, they, and if they don't like it, they have to use you know, cheap plastic surgery to fix it uh, with a, a, a photo editing program, right? Um, but we want to make a photograph that basically, um, that basically looks like the, like the person's fantasy of themselves, right? It's, it's what they want to look at. Um, one that satisfies their ideal image of how they think they look. So most photographers use lighting. Um, a professional does not want to spend a lot of time in Photoshop fixing a photograph. That's not a good use of their time. They want to get it right the first time. Um, so we don't want to have to spend a lot of time fixing people after, you know, in the after part of the photography process. Um, after work is not uh, economically feasible, really. So you want to get it right the first time. Um, so most photographers use lighting. Lighting is the most important part of photography, after all. And there's a lot of ways that we can use lighting to make a subject look great. Um, but there's, there's, some, there's a reason why a lot of people don't like photographs of themselves, um, and it has to do with how we see ourselves. Now, when we look at ourselves, we see ourselves in the mirror. So we see a mirror image of ourselves. And that's why a lot of times when you see a photograph of yourself, you think, that doesn't look like me. Um, and that's because even though we're very symmetrical, right? We have a very symmetrical face, um, and it seems like it's the same on both sides. It's not exactly the same on both sides. There's subtle differences, and we're used to seeing it uh, ourselves in the mirror. So when we see a photograph, we're actually seeing how other people see us. So that's a very interesting um, thought. And we need to think about that for just a sec. Um, and a lot of times we're not satisfied with our photographs. And partly because most, most of the time people don't know people are taking our photos, they don't know what they're doing, so they're not real flattering photos, right? So, um, so today we're gonna to talk about how to take a good formal photograph. Um, and uh, a, a trick that some photographers use, you know, when they have a person that, that really hates seeing photographs of themselves, is they actually flip the image um, horizontally. So it becomes that mirror image that people are used to seeing, and they often will be more happy with that. So. Um, that's kind of an interesting thing. So let's talk, talk about how to do a formal portrait. Um, so the formal portrait So the formal portrait is assignment number um, six, right? Assignment number six, and it's one image. Right, so you're only going to turn in one image. That's it. We're not, you're not going to have any other, <laughs> anything else. I don't want 10 images. I don't want two images. I want one image. And that means you have to be the one to choose which one is best. If you feel like you need help, ask someone. Say, which one do you think is the best one? Right? And it gets some feedback from other people. Um, but I want you to choose. This is your, uh, this is your aesthetic. This is you learning how to develop your aesthetic and how to see what it makes a good photograph, okay? So obviously lighting is, is really key, 
Um, but with first, the first thing you have to do when you're going to take a formal photograph, the very first thing is you have to find a subject. Right? You have to have someone to take a formal photograph of. Right? You may not take a fo formal photograph of your dog okay? or your cat or any animal. Um, I recommend that you stay away from taking formal photographs of children. They're very difficult to get to hold still and do what you ask them to do. Um, can, um, a lot of times people will question, can I have more than one person in my photograph? Yes, you can have more than one person. Just remember, for every extra person that you add into your photograph, it's like 10 times more work. Um, and it's more difficult to get people to have their eyes open at the same time, to have the, the good look on their face at the same time. Um, so my recommendation with this is, you know, try to do just one person. Um, if you need to do two, that's fine. But be careful about adding too many people in. It'll make it really, really difficult for you. Um, to get it. So if you have to find a subject, subject's the most important thing because without a subject, you're not going to be able to make a formal portrait. And you may not do a self-portrait for this. You must have someone pose for you. This is the practice I want you guys to have. Um, so for this one, you have to find a subject. Um, and when you're doing this, I mean, I think you're best, most likely to find a subject in your immediate family or friends. Right, at, you know, you can tell them that it's a photography assignment, um, but you need to plan it in advance. It's important that you plan it in advance. So when you ask for your subject, do not wait to the last minute. Right, a formal portrait takes planning. This, you know, people want to look good. They want to be their best. You know, it's like having your senior portrait taken or going to a photo studio. Um, you're you're making a, a planned portrait that's very important for this particular assignment. So you need to ask someone. And to ask someone, a professional photographer, you know, wants to make their subject feel comfortable. And, um, you know, you don't want to wait to the last minute. You want to be able to have that person feel comfortable like it's a planned thing, like they have a chance to prepare for it, right? They can get their hair done or put makeup on or do whatever they need to do, you know, make sure they shave, right? This is not where you're going to pull your best friend out of bed, you know, at eight o'clock in the morning with bedhead and looking like they're just woke up, oh, you know, and take their photo. That's not working, right? You need to plan it in advance. So you need to set a time and a date, um, and, you know, pick a place, have a plan B. Um, but most important, we're talking about the subject right now. So you want to do it with some flattery. You want to ask the person in a way that makes them feel comfortable and like you really want them as your subject. So um, you want to say something like, oh, I have this assignment for photography where I have to do a formal portrait. I know if, I, if you will pose for me and let me take your portrait, um, I know that I'll get an A on the assignment. I mean, really, you'd be the most perfect model to use for my portrait assignment, my formal portrait assignment. And what will they get out of it? Well, if the portrait turns out good, you can give them a copy and they can use it on their, their profile for LinkedIn or Instagram or whatever, right? They can use it as a profile portrait um, or use it on, on their social media for whatever they need when they need one. Um, so I want you guys to make sure that you do say it in a, you know, ask in a very flattering and uh, a way that makes your, your potential subject feel really comfortable, feel like you really want them, that they're attractive and that you're, they're gonna be helping you, right? That's an important thing, right? You do not wanna be at the last minute going up to someone going, hey, I'm really desperate, you're, the, my, you're my last chance, you know? Nobody wants to hear that. They wanna know that, you're, that they're your first choice, right? That you know that they'd be a really good model and they'd make a perfect portrait, right? So you wanna make sure that your choosing of a subject is good. Right, you're not gonna, you, you know, you don't want to go like stalking someone in the library and being like, hey, you know, you're pretty, you're pretty good looking. Um, can I take your picture? You know, and you got someone on the phone to nine one one. Okay, so you don't want to do that. You want to pick someone that you know, that you feel comfortable with, and that would feel comfortable with you, you know, practicing taking a portrait of them. Right, that's it. And the the end result is a portrait that they like. Right, something that they're really gonna like. So the subject is really important. Next, you're gonna pick um, a day, right, and time. 
Remember what the, the best day and time is? The best day and time is early morning, right? Early a.m. or late afternoon. Right, this time of year, um, I'm, I'm uh, making this recording in July, so this time of year, we would have uh, a time of between, say, seven and nine in the morning would be a good time, and between about six and eight in the afternoon, because it stays out, it just stays light out really late right now, like almost till nine o'clock. So you can probably go between six and eight in the afternoon. Do not do it midday. Okay, the middle of the day is the worst time to do a portrait. We're gonna use natural light, so you don't want the light coming from the top on their head and give them those black eye look and the little Hitler mustache um, and the little goatee, uh, goat patch thing going on there, right? Or soul patch or whatever. You don't want that. You want, you want the light to be coming from the side of the face, so that's why early a.m. or late afternoon, okay? Then, um, you're going to pick a place, a place or two, okay, that you can go to take your portrait at. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you have it in a place where you are, um, that you have it in a place uh, where you know that you can have a nice background, that you're not going to be disturbed or, or be disturbing other people. Um, you're welcome to do it like in your backyard if you want to, but make sure the background looks good. Okay, the background is really, really important in a formal portrait. That's why people go into studios, right? They go into studios because they can have a background that's neutral. Um, and if you can't find a good background, you're going to hang something like a cloth or some paper behind your subject, okay? Really important, right? Background's important. So pick a place or two. And for both of these, right, have a plan B. Right, plan B is what if the sun's not out? What do you do then, right? And we'll talk about that a little bit later in the lecture. But you wanna make sure you make an extra plan for both date, time, and place um, so, that you, so that if something comes up, that you have a backup, okay, the backup plan, right? Um, <clears throat> next, you're gonna plan for the shoot. Right? You want to make sure that you're ready for your subject. Right? So you're going to talk to the subject about where, where they'd like to have their photo taken. You know, what, like, you know, they have some say in it, right? Because you're taking their photo. Um, and you know, make a plan with them. So you get your subject, you set your time, date, and place, or, or more than one place. Um, and then you're going to talk to your, you're going to prepare for the shoot. So you're going to talk to your subject. Number one, or A, you want them, they're going to, they might ask you what, what to wear. What do I wear? Well, ask them to wear dark colors, right? Dark, solid colors. So what are some dark colors? Okay, navy blue, dark, like a dark navy blue, dark brown, black, um, Dark green, like a forest green. Burgundy, a really dark, deep red. Um, purple, dark purple. All of those nice dark colors, solid colors are best, right? You want dark solid colors, no white, right? No white, and the reason you don't want white is because no matter how white your skin is, okay, no matter how white your skin is, a white piece of paper or a white shirt or whatever, white dress is always whiter. Now granted, if you're filming a, um, you're shooting a wedding and the bride is wearing white, you're not gonna tell her, hey, you know, I think you should wear black for this, <laughs> right? That's not gonna work. So you have to work with what you got in there. But if you have a choice, you're gonna ask your, your subject to wear, to bring dark, solid co color clothes to, to uh, 
have their photo taken in. Um, and, the re and there's a main reason for that because in a formal portrait, the focus is on the face, right? You want the focus on your subject's face. You do not want them to be looking at the white shirt or the white hanky or the white dress or whatever because that's gonna be the brightest thing in the photograph. And as we talked about with eye directors earlier um, in our composition lecture, with eye directors, our eye often will go to the brightest part of the photograph, and that's why your subject should always be well lit and usually the brightest thing in your composition. So if your subject is a person for a formal portrait, you're gonna to want to have them well lit and be the brightest thing in the composition. You don't, you don't want the clothes taking away from their face. That's the important part of this, okay? Um, and their eyes especially, you want to focus on their eyes. You know, they, they say the eyes are the window to the soul, and in a portrait, the eyes are the most important thing. So there must be enough light, light on the eyes, and not, on, not focused on the clothing, okay? So you don't want a lot of busy clothing with you know, no plaid, right? No stripes, no zigzags, no polka dots, no logos, no floral prints, solid color dark clothing, okay? So that's the most important thing. Um, and so you're gonna talk about, uh, talk about that, make sure they pick out some dark clothing. And then you'll talk a little bit about posing. Right, posing is really an important part of this. The kind of photograph that I will not accept is the mugshot photograph. And that's the photograph where the person is like this, straight on with the shoulder straight on, okay? There's lots of different types of poses. I recommend that you actually look in some magazines and look online, look up um, uh, portrait posing, right? You notice some of the examples that we saw, we had people pose like this and like this, right? You'll notice that almost all of them, their shoulders were turned at an angle to the camera, right? They were not straight on. They were like this, right? In some cases, they were even turned more like that. You might see them like this or leaning up on something, right? Like the back of a chair. Um, you saw that a lot. And your subject will ask you what to do with their hands. And you can tell them, you know, you can hold, clasp your hands like this. Um, and it depends on how much of the subject you're going to have in the, the, uh, Portrait, right? Is it going to be full body from head to foot? Is it going to be like from the waist up? Is it going to be neck and shoulders? But whatever it is, I want you focused on their face, all right? The face is the important thing, not their clothes, not their bodies, right? So their face is the important thing to focus on. Um, so posing, you do want to do something with their hands, but you don't want it to take away from their face. So you want to lead them, lead the viewer into looking at the face. So a lot of times having a hand um, up on near, or near the face can be a really good thing, right? Because um, it leads the eye up to the face as opposed to taking it away from the face. Um, so posing is really important. You want to avoid the, most, the, the three most common poses, the mugshot pose, okay? The corpse pose where the person is standing up and they're like straight like this with their, with their arms straight next to them and they're like, you know, sucking in their gut and looking like, and they look unnatural, you know, it doesn't look good at all. Um, or the cover the crotch pose, right? All three of those are straight on to the camera, right? The mugshot look that I told you guys I don't want to see, right? So I want you to, to try having the shoulders um, tilted one way or the other, right? They can be leaning over a little bit. There can, there's a lot of different ways you can make it have a little bit of an asymmetrical balance. So it does not look, very, does not look completely symmetrical and um, mugshot-like, you know? We don't want that, okay? We have that on our driver's license. We don't want any more of those mugshot photographs or portraits. So we want, it, we want to make sure that you have posing and you're thinking about posing, okay? Um, and then finally, Seeing and framing. Well, I want you to do a crop if you need to do a crop, okay? Because cropping is okay, and we'll talk about that in the demo por portion of this lecture. Um, 
But when, I, when it's okay for you to crop, I want you to try cropping in camera as much as possible. So you need to really pay attention to what's in the background. If you're outside, then it's even more important because there's things that you may not notice because your eye is focused on the subject, but then in the background is not making a good photograph. You know, having a light pole coming out of someone's head or a tree coming out of someone's head um, is not good. It takes, the, it takes the focus away from the subject. So you want that subject to be the main focus, the face, okay? <clears throat> so you wanna make sure the background is not distracting. And I recommend using a narrow depth of field, so just the face area is in focus, okay? Um, you know, just the head, not anything behind or anything in front. But even so, you don't want anything distracting from your subject. So um, if, you, if you decide to do it indoors, okay, you're gonna set your model up next to a window and or your subject up next to a window so the light comes in from the side and you're gonna decide on what kind of portrait lighting, right? You're gonna do broad lighting, you're gonna do short lighting, you're gonna do butterfly lighting, which I don't recommend because once again, that's the mugshot look, okay? Um, and, uh, and if you do it outside, the same thing, you're gonna decide what kind of lighting, how the, how the face, you're gonna have them tilt their head a little bit. You're gonna look for things like just one hair hanging down. Or, or a bra strap showing, right? Those are all things that will make it a bad formal portrait, okay? You're paying attention to these little minute details. What's in the background? Can you control the background by using a cloth, right? How are you gonna pose the person? Um, you know, there's lots of poses that are unisex, right? Anyone can pose like this, right? A, a woman or a, a man or a woman, a female or a male, right? Um, Anyone can pose like this. This is a good thing to do if you are trying to maybe cover up a, a blemish on your subject or something, right? You can have them have their hand on their face or covering up or leaning on it like that or like this, okay? All those are great poses. Um, pretty unisex, right? Pretty unlikely you're gonna get a guy to pose like this, right? So think about what kind of pose you wanna do and look up some examples, right? And go over it with your subject. Let your subject have some say in how they're gonna pose so that they feel comfortable, okay? So you wanna make sure that you, um, you get a subject. Remember, you need to have it be, you, you need to be um, very sensitive and very flattering um, for that. Next, you're gonna set a date and a time, early morning or late afternoon, right? And you're gonna set a place, like where do you wanna go? The beach, a park, um, your backyard, right? Your, your subject's backyard, whatever. Wherever you're gonna go, you need to pay attention to your details. Make sure you have a background that's gonna, that's gonna work, you know? Um, a, a brick wall, right? Or a, a fence maybe, or just a plain wall, or you're gonna hang a piece of fabric behind or tack up a, a piece of fabric um, to do that. Right? And then make sure you have a plan B. Right? If the sun isn't cooperating for outdoors, make sure you have a way that you can, you can make it work for you. Right? That so you can go indoors and, and do it or have another place you can go or another time or date right? that'll work. And then on the shoot, you're going to make sure that your subject is wearing dark, solid colors. If your subject shows up with a t-shirt with a logo on it, right? No logos, right? Have them take it off, turn it inside out and put it back on so that you don't see the logo on the front, okay? Um, and then you're going to go over some posing. Make sure that the subject understands um, how, how you want them to be or how they can be to make a really successful portrait. Um, and finally, when you're, when you're actually taking the portrait, you need to pay attention when you're looking through your viewfinder, you need to pay attention to what what your subject looks like through the viewfinder, right? Little little tiny details, a piece of little lint in the hair, right? Um, a little thread loose on the clothes, um, a bra strap showing, right? Um, any little tiny thing like that's gonna look really obvious when you're done and you don't wanna have to go in and try to fix it with a photo editing program. You need to have it work to have it work right the first time. Um, and so we're gonna talk about one last thing, um, and that is once, once you're all done with your photograph, right, you're gonna download them, 
And I want you to, uh, I want you to remember that professional photographers often take, you know, a hundred or more photographs in each session. And they may only end up with like five or six that are really decent. So don't be discouraged. I have a lot of students that think that every photograph they take should be fantastic. Well, that's just not the case. You know, weather doesn't always cooperate. The subject doesn't always cooperate. You know, their eyes are half closed or they're making a silly face or whatever. It does not going to work. Um, you need to be able to, um, uh, to, you need to be able to understand that it's okay to take a lot of photographs. Professionals do. I take hundreds of photographs when I go do a photo shoot and I literally only end up sometimes with, you know, 10 or 20 out of, out of several hundred. So don't feel bad that you took a lot of photographs and they didn't all turn out. Okay. And I also recommend that you use some bracketing. In other words, like we did in our very first assignment where we did three exposures, try doing a several exposures, the correct, overexposed and underexposed and see which one you like best, right? If you're using a digital camera, you can do that. It's not a problem, okay? So um, formal portrait is one image. And um, once you download them and you've picked an image, um, and if you do need to crop, here's where you're cropping either in camera, okay? That means that's where you're cropping when you're taking the photo and what you see in the picture frame, okay? The little, the the frame that you're looking looking at with your subject in it, you wanna make sure that you do as much cropping in that frame as possible. And also I want to make sure that you orient your camera to the pose. So if you're just doing head and shoulders, you probably want a um, vertical portrait format as opposed to a long uh, horizontal landscape format. So most of the time you're going to be using this kind of a format for a portrait. Occasionally you might, it might work to do one that's, that's, you know, this type of a format, the horizontal landscape, but not always. So when you're cropping, there's some rules to cropping and it's really important. And this goes whether you're doing it in the camera or whether you're doing it with an editing program, a photo editing program after the fact. And a good free editing program that you can crop and do a few little things in is called Pixlr. I'm pretty sure it's that, it's pixlr.com. Um, I'll look it up and make sure, but it's a free program. Of course, there's a bunch of ads and stuff all over it, but it has a lot of the same tools that Photoshop has and you don't have to download it on your computer. It's on the internet. You upload your photo, you fix, you know, crop it, do whatever you need to do, and then you download it. You save it back to your, to your computer, and you can save it under a different file name so you still have the original, and then you have the one that you cropped. And that's what I recommend doing, okay? So if you have to crop after, you know, after work as opposed to while it's in the camera, right, when you're taking the photo, but um, there's two different, you can use a photo editing program such as Pixlr, which is a free one, or Photoshop. But there are some rules. So let me draw a little person here. He's kind of got a big head. Hang on. This is not going to be my best um, drawing skills here because I'm kind of at a weird angle, but that's okay. We'll just try to make it as obvious as possible. Okay, so here's our, our model, feeling pretty happy, right? And so there are rules to where you can crop, right? So there's some no-nos. You never wanna crop at a joint. So you don't wanna crop with an elbow, a wrist, right? Um, or knee or ankle. Whoops. Right? So this is no. Not at the elbow, not at the wrist, not at the knee, not at the ankle. I also recommend you don't crop right at the, right at the, the 
uh, lower waist right at the crotch. Okay, that's kind of a no-no. So no right there. All right. Um, so where can you crop? Right. How about shoulders? It's a good spot. Mid arm, chest. Right. That's a good spot right there. Right. Mid forearm and waist. That's good. You can do thighs and you can do mid calf, right? Those are all good places to crop. You Occasionally, it's okay to do here on the neck, um, but generally you wanna show a little bit of shoulders. That's, I think that's a pretty, a pretty general thing. Um, so I don't really recommend that. You sometimes will see that in fashion shots where it's a model and, and uh, the spokesmodel is modeling some kind of makeup and you'll just see the face, right, like that. Um, kind of, that's like kind of a glamour shot. But for a formal portrait, I do recommend showing a little shoulders at, at least, okay? Um, but you can go from the full body. You wanna make sure you show the, if you have doing the, the full body, you wanna show the feet. Don't cut the feet off and don't cut the top of the head off, okay? Um, you wanna make sure that you're, you don't wanna cut off the top of the head or the bottom of the feet. Okay, you wanna make sure that, that they stay whole because otherwise it looks like an accident. So you have to look for these things. You have to see like a camera. It's really important that you do this when you're doing a formal portrait. Um, so all the things that you gotta do, you need to find a subject. Be flattering. It's gonna be really fun, right? Don't stress over it, but I want you to be prepared. Okay, make sure that the subject, that you guys have a, a time, date, and a place to, to meet. Um, make, ask the subject to bring solid color, dark clothing, okay? Maybe even a couple of changes, right? To have a couple different outfits. Um, and make a plan B, just in case the weather's not cooperating. Like what if we have a rainstorm or something unexpected, okay? So you need to do all of those things. You need to look online for some poses and you need to pay attention to the examples that I show in the second half of this lecture. So we will see you in a few.